Gender Links is committed to an inclusive, equal and just society in the public and private space in accordance with the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development. In 2018, we conducted a gender analysis of the 2018 Zimbabwe elections with a particular focus on local government. As illustrated in the graph, there were declines in all areas of political decision making except in cabinet. These figures show that Zimbabwe is still far from reaching its regional and constitutional commitment to gender parity in political decision making. They underscore the need to extend the constitutional quota for women in parliament due to expire in 2023 and to extend this to local government. The Women in Local Government Forum, WILGF, has championed this cause at the local level. By way of background, there are two main types of electoral systems. In the first past the post, FPTP or winner takes all system, candidates contest against each other in constituencies. The candidate with the highest number of votes wins. In the proportional representation or list system, parties rank their candidates in a list. Voters vote for the party, not for a candidate. Seats are distributed to candidates on the list according to the percentage of seats that the party wins. In Zimbabwe, two-thirds of the seats in the House of Assembly are contested on a winner-takes-all system. Women and men are free to contest these seats. The other one-third of the seats are reserved for women. These are distributed to the parties on a PR basis. The four main political parties, MDC Alliance, MDCT, People's Rainbow Coalition and ZANU-PF, released their political manifestos to the public prior to the 2018 elections. The MDC Alliance and ZANU-PF pledged to ensure gender parity in key public and private institutions. Neither specified how this would be achieved, especially at local level, or what will happen when the current clause at national level expires in the 2023 elections. Neither party honoured its commitment to field 50% women in the constituency seats. The MDCT made no mention of a quota system but states that they will legislate and implement policies aimed at eradicating all forms of discrimination against women. Women candidates faced many hurdles in the elections. Words like witch and prostitute were used as insults against women. Women's representation in Parliament dropped from 34% to 31%. This means that in 2018, almost all women in Parliament got in through the quota. Very few won in the openly contested seats. Zimbabwe Senate has the highest representation of women at 44%, but this too represented a drop of 4 percentage points. The graph illustrates the proportion of men and women candidates by political party at the local level. There were far more men than that of women candidates across all parties. ZANU-PF and the MDC Alliance contributed 4% each of the 17% of women contesting the 2018 local government elections, slightly over half of the women contesting. The People's Rainbow Coalition, PRC, fielded 2% with smaller parties accounting for the balance. The next graph compares the performance of Centers of Excellence COE, for gender in local government and non-COE councils. In the last five years, the COE program has broadened out to cover two-thirds of the country. Sadly, there was no noticeable difference in the performance of COE and non-COE councils with regards to women's political representation. This shows that there is still much work to be done in challenging patriarchal attitudes and norms. This graph shows that following the 2018 elections, Bulawayo province has the highest percentage of female councillors in the country at 28%, while Mashana Land Central Province has a mere 6%. The table compares women's representation in the COE councils in 2013 and 2018. 
Chipinge Town Council is the only local authority that managed to achieve gender parity from 25% to 50%. Another lone bright spark is Chinoy Municipality that had no female representation in the 2008 election but now has women councillors. Cabinet is the only area of decision making that witnessed an increase in the proportion of women's representation from 17% to 31%. This followed a meeting the President had with gender activists prior to the elections. Key recommendations from Gender Link's report include 1. Extend Section 124 of the Constitution to include local government and maintain this temporary special measure for at least three more elections or until such a time when there are reasonable prospects of gender parity being achieved through normal political party processes. 2. Lobby for permanent electoral reforms to a PR system that is more inclusive and conducive to women's participation. For example, Lesotho, national level, and South Africa, local level, have mixed systems that boost women's political chances. 3. Work with political parties to embed gender parity in all their policies and practices. In the long term, there is no shortcut to gender equality being normalized in political parties.